Hey Kensington, my name is Michael Bouchard and I'm the Student Ministries Director at the Orion Campus. Today I'm going to be reading Mark 10 and Psalm 16. I'll start with Mark and then I'll read in Psalms. Then Jesus left Capernaum and went down to the region of Judea and into the area east of the Jordan River. Once again, crowds gathered around him, and as usual, he was teaching them. Some Pharisees came and tried to trap him with this question, Should a man be allowed to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them with a question. What did Moses say, about, uh, what did Moses say in the law about divorce? Well, he permitted it, they replied. He said, A man can give his wife a written notice of divorce and send her away. But Jesus responded, he wrote this commandment only as a concession to your hard hearts. But God made them male and female from, be from the beginning of creation. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no, let no one split apart what God has joined together. Later, when he was alone with the disciples in, this, in the house, they brought up the subject again. He told them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries someone else, she commits adultery. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his, in his arms and placed his, hand, his hands on their heads and he blessed them. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you must know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There's still one thing you haven't done. He told him, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. This amazed them, but Jesus said again, Dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? They asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Then Peter began to speak up. We've given up everything to follow you, he said. Yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for the sake, for my sake and for the good news, will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and property, along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. But many who are the greatest now will be the least important then, and those who seem least important now will be the, will be the greatest then. They were now on their way up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. The disciples were filled with awe, and the people following behind were overwhelmed with fear. Taking the twelve disciples aside, Jesus once more began to describe everything that was about to happen to him. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die and will hand him over to the Romans. They will, whip, they will mock him, spit on him, flog him with a whip, and kill him. But after three days, he will rise again. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came over and spoke to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do us a favor. What is your request? He asked. And they replied, When you sit on your glorious throne, we want to sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. But Jesus said to them, You don't know what you're asking. 
Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering that I am about to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering that I must be baptized with? Oh, yes, they replied, we are able. Then Jesus told them, You will indeed drink from my bitter cup and be baptized with my baptism of suffering. But I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. God has prepared those places for the ones that he has chosen. When the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. So Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people. And officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, Tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling on, He's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat. He jumped up and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, said the blind man. I want to see. And Jesus said to him, Go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see. And he followed Jesus down the road. Psalm 16. Psalm 16, a psalm of David. Keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you. The godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. I will not take part in the sacrifices of blood or even speak the names of their gods. Lord, you are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land that you have given me is pleasant. It's a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety, for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow among the dead or allow your holy one to rot in the grave you will show me the way of life granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever i think of all the things that that i read one of my favorite stories is in there one of my favorite stories in the bible i actually just read from from mark it's where was where the, the the parents bring their kids up to jesus and i think about this especially in this time um in the time that we're in right now, I hear from parents all the time that they don't feel like they're doing the right thing. Like parents, I, actually on Sunday, I heard from a friend of ours who is, her and her husband, they're some of the greatest parents I have met in my last 12 years here. And even in my long time of knowing them, it really, it shocked me to hear her say when talking about her her parenting, like it's almost like she, um, she put herself down and said, you know, I'm failing them. And and, I, and my first reaction was like, what are you talking about? Like I have seen how you have, I've seen how you have have discipled your child towards Christ. And in fact, it reminded me of this story where there's these parents who bring their kid to Jesus right in the middle of the crowd, and and people saw that and they were like, what are you doing? And they, and they started heaping guilt on the parents right then and there, which shows me like this is a cyclical thing for parents. Like this has always been around. It was around then and it's around now. It's interesting how much guilt can be thrown on you as a parent from, from the people around you or maybe from comparing on Instagram or, or on Facebook or, or seeing what other people do. And you might think, man, am I doing enough? And and what Jesus, how he responds to to the crowds shaming and the crowds guilting of the parents is he blesses them 
right? He blesses them by blessing their kids. And he says, don't tell them they're doing the wrong thing right now. Don't tell them that, that they shouldn't be here right now. They're bringing them to me. They're bringing them to see me. And then he, and then he really flips the tables because I think um, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty common for people to look at kids and tell them they need to grow up, right? It's, it's a phrase that I, I heard a lot growing up as I was a kid. Like, you just need to grow up, right? You, just act like more like an adult. And Jesus looks at the crowd around him and he says, y'all need to act more like them. In fact, you're not even going to be able to see the kingdom. You're not even able to, you're going to be, be able to enter the kingdom if you can't see the way that they see. If you can't look at life the way that they look at life. If you can't be willing to let go of things that you know in order to see things that are, that, see things that are right in front of you, right? If you, if you can't look for the kingdom the way that they look for the kingdom, if you can't have that kind of faith, you're not going to be able to enter it. And he gives in front of everyone this blessing to the kids and to their parents. So I just want to say to those of you who right now in this season who are parents and you're looking at everything, all the decisions you've had to make in the last few months regarding school, regarding what you're going to uh, what you're going to do as far as like, do I send them? Do I, do I try to find a different school for them to go to? Do we put them, have them go online? Do we have them go in person? Like, what do we do? And to those of you who are in there who are questioning it, just know if you are, if you will lead your child toward Christ, like he will honor that and he will honor you. So thanks for joining us today. Let me, let me pray. Father, I thank you for, uh, Thank you for your word and how you are always leading us to see the kingdom no matter where we're at. And I pray for pray for everyone who's who's listening. I pray that their their day will be oriented toward you and that they will be able to to be aware, myself included, that we will be able to be aware of the moments throughout the day where the kingdom can break through. Um, but I ask a, an extra blessing towards towards those who who have a kid that's in their family and who are having to make decisions for them, whether they're a parent or a step parent, a grandparent, or even an aunt or uncle. And, um, I pray that they will, uh, I will pray that they will sense your love and your presence. Um, and they will hear, hear, hear your voice whenever the, the, the voice of shame creeps in or wherever the, the voice of guilt creep, creeps in when they might think that they are not enough. And instead they will know that, that, uh, that they are, that they are blessed because of the kid that is in their in their household um, and that you have great things for them and they will get their identity from you and they will be able to trust and rest in you. We ask this in Jesus' name.